Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of One Man Stream. On today's episode we are going to create a scoreboard graphic from start to finish and the graphic that we are going to create today is this graphic right here. And this graphic I actually created it for hockey um, but you can retrofit it to use it for some other sports if you wanted to. Uh, the techniques that we're going to describe in the creation of this graphic are all te techniques that you would be able to use uh, creating a graphic for any other sport as well. The graphic is created in GT Title Designer and you can see all the different elements over here to the far right. After we create the graphic and import it into our vMix uh, production, we need a way to control it and that's going to be the second part of this tutorial where we are controlling this graphic through vMix UTC and I'll explain this uh, layout a little bit later uh, in the tutorial. So to get started today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this little area right here, the uh, square that we have setting on edge uh, that contains the period uh, and the game clock. So how did I create this? Well, I did it just a little bit differently. What I did is I brought in, I used this right triangle um, button right here. And I made a right triangle and then I used these arrows here to turn it so that it was going to be on edge. Easier said than done. All right, something like that. And then I right clicked on it and copied and right click and pasted. Then I brought the rectangle over this way and I grabbed these uh, point here where these arrows converge and I rotated this again. Took a little bit of jockeying but you mess with it a little bit and then you can actually line it up uh, perfectly like I have this one right here. And you may ask, well why didn't you just use a square? Well, the reason that I did it this way is because I put a gradient on each one of these and you can see how you got these gradient lines going in different directions and I thought that was just a, a neat little effect uh, to add to this uh, square uh, to spice it up a little bit. When I set the animation in motion, you can see how both of these right triangles come up together uh, from the bottom and then kind of spread out to fill up that area. I'll do it one more time. You can see that this uh, right here, this line comes in first. You can see as these lines are moving, these uh, other lines on the opposite side of the square are moving as well and they kind of end up converging uh, all at the same time. As far as for the borders, uh, that was pretty simple as well. Oh, wait a second, let me go ahead and explain to you uh, how I did the gradients on these. I went up to home, under fill, I clicked on gradient and then I added a couple stops. I actually added more than a couple. We end up with one, two, three, four, five, six all together. And on the end points right here, I made them black. And then what I did on these next ones is I went to the uh, color palette. I clicked on the black. And then what I did is on the um, blue component of the black, I moved it down just a smidge just to where you can see some of the blue coming through. And then I copied that. And I put that here. And I put it here as well. And then I went back to it again and I just took it down just a little bit. Well, we got to get click on the black. And then I took it down just a little bit more. And we're going to copy that. And we're going to paste it here. and click OK. And uh, this one's actually a little bit bluer than I made the one that's actually that's actually appears in the um, 
in the graphic, but you can see how that gradient works, how that gradient function works right there. Actually, what I did, uh, now that I think about it, is I created the gradient first and then I copied and pasted. So let's get rid of this right triangle four. Oops. So then what I did is I actually copied and pasted it once I had the gradient. And it looked a little something like that. But like I said, this one's a little bit a little bit bluer uh, than this other one. As far as the bordering parts go, those are very simple. I just want to click up here under the rectangle. And then I clicked on the fill color as being white. And it takes a little messing around with these in order to get them the exact size that you want. And if you remember from some of our previous videos, if you click on um, the name of that particular element, you can use your arrows to do some fine adjusting. So that's what I did there. And I'll show you how we did the animation when we get a little bit, uh, a little bit closer uh, to the end of this tutorial. But I did the same thing um, for all the rest of them. Once you find a size that works, I just kind of copied and pasted. And then you just move them into place. Some of them you got to make a little bit longer. Some of them you got to make a little bit shorter. And it takes a little tinkering, uh, but you, you can eventually get it exactly the way that you want it. And that's what I, that's what I did here. Uh, this other long one, this one right here, same thing. If you want to keep them all the same size, which is what I wanted to do, I went over here under format and I saw that I had the height of them 10. So I tried to keep the height of them the same uh, on all of them so that it looks uniform um, when you're animating it. And then you would just click on it and go to your fill color and make it white. And as far as the animation goes, you actually have under animation, you have a storyboard here. And these are all the animations that I have uh, in the finished graphic. And this is really helpful when you're trying to plan out your animations. If, some, if something's not looking right or it isn't acting the way that you want it to, uh, you can use this particular storyboard uh, to look through and see what your animations are. So what I did is I made this animation, this long animation first, and I have it doing a reveal from the right, I believe. Yeah, I have a, a reveal from the right. And you can see that there's no delay on it and the duration is one second. So what I had to do on these two, and you kind of got to mess with the direction uh, of the animation because we've repositioned these, uh, these particular elements. So on this one right here, we're going to do reveal. We're going to delay at one second because we want this long one to play out before these other, uh, other elements are going to start. And it's going to have to be from the other opposite direction. All right, so we have that one, that orientation correct. So now we're going to have to go to rectangle one, reveal. Okay, we're going to have to go the opposite direction on that. And you, as you could tell, it started early. So we're going to have to put that delay in there as well. All right, and you can see that it's mimicking the one at the top. This um, long horizontal piece is coming through first and then the other corners are coming out and then at the same time these other pieces are coming up this way Okay, I did those other two elements kind of quickly. So let's go to this one here, animations, reveal. Let's see how the direction is. Not 
as luck would have it, we have those directions correct. Okay, that's how we did that first little piece of animation right there. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, the next two pieces we're gonna work on, we're gonna work on these elements right here. This one right here, and then this one right here. So what we did is we created a rectangle. And it looks like it's one solid rectangle, but it's actually, it's not. Uh, in order to get the shape that we wanted, we have to skew the, uh, this left-hand part of it uh, negative 45 in order to get it to nest up nicely against our square that we have here. So if we put it there in place, you can see it's a little bit bigger, but you can see we have the right skew uh, that we need for this particular element. So what we did on this one is we did a gradient as well. We did gradients with red and black. There's another video that we did that goes into quite a bit of detail. It's called Working with Gradients. And if you're interested in a little bit more information on gradients, that's the tutorial that I would point you toward. So what I did after I created this right here, you would just click on Home, then you would go up to Fill, and then you go to Gradients, and you would have to click a few stops like we've done before. And like I said, I did red and black. So on the endpoints here, and then these other two points, I made a little bit lighter red. Or actually, this is going to be the exact opposite of what I did on the other one, but it'll give you an idea of, of what uh, some other possibilities look like. Click OK, and that's the way this gradient looks. But like I said, um, you can notice that each end is skewed, and if, in, if someone's figured out how to do this, please drop me an email and let me know. But I haven't figured out how to just skew one end of an element. So what I do in that case is I click on it and copy, and I click on it and paste, and it creates another one, the same color, the gradient's in the exact same orientation. And then what I do under Effects, I go and I take that skew off, set it back to zero, position it where it needs to be. And if I hadn't told, uh, told you beforehand that that's what I did in the final product, you would have thought that that was just one uh, continuous element there where actually it's two. And for the other one, I did the exact same thing except the skew down here is going to be uh, in the opposite direction. So how did we get this element here in our gradient? There's another tutorial that we did a little ways back called masking. And that is a, a technique that you really need to know when you're making these graphics because it allows you to have your logo or whatever it is you're putting over top of, of the uh, element to take the shape of that element. And I'll show you what I mean. This right here, I'm gonna click on rectangle. I'm gonna come like this. I'm going to use the same skew that we use, so it's negative 45. I'm gonna bring it over. Make it just a tad bit smaller, and then I'm gonna take the opacity down to one. You really wouldn't even know that was there. And I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this one. It says rectangle three. I double click on it, and I'm gonna call this one mask visiting. So this is gonna be the mask for the visiting team. So then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring a logo in. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna shrink this down a little bit and get it to where it kind of fits in that area but overlaps. So this is where the trickery comes in. Uh, when you have that image highlighted, you go up to Mask, and we're gonna look for the one that we just created over here which said Mask Visitors, or Mask Viz. So we're gonna click on that, and you can see how the only part of the logo that is showing 
is the part that's included inside that mask that we created. Did the exact same thing for this one down here, created the mask the exact same way. When we brought the image in, what we do is we would mask it with whatever name that we gave this. I would have given this one ma uh, a name that said mask home. So then when you brought in the image, you click on the image, you go up here to mask and you'd look for the one that said mask home. It would allow you to bring in this image inside of this element that you created. For all of these here, for the BOS, the shots, one, and the score uh, elements right here, all I did was I used the ABC. Now this right here is two different components. The shots here is static. This is just text that I brought in. It always stays the same. But these right here are a separate component. And this one would be called visiting team shots. And this would be home team shots. And it would be these numbers right here. And this would be visiting team score. And this would be home team score. Now let's look at the animation one more time. You can see how the animation for this right here goes left to right. So what I would do for rectangle one under animations, I use reveal. I have it go from left to right, no delay and a duration of one. I'm going to do the same thing. Reveal, no delay, left to right, a duration of one. Let's play that out and see what that looks like. Okay, we do need to have a little bit of delay on the second component, rectangle two. So this whole, the whole thing is going to play out over one second. Okay, so it took a little bit of fiddling around, uh, but we were able to get it pretty close. There's a little bit of a break in there, but I, I'm, you get the idea. You kind of, you have to mess around with the uh, delay uh, on these two particular pieces because they are uh, like I demonstrated. Uh, they're not one continuous shape. It's actually two pieces. So you're going to have to uh, deal with the uh, or adjust the uh, delay a little bit. The um, three letter abbreviation, I use the ABC box. I centered it in the middle left and right and in the middle up and down. I changed the color to white. And then the font that I used on this particular one I hadn't used before. It's this one right here. And then I used extra bold and we'll make it a little bit bigger all I did was double click on it and then typed in BOS and that's how we did this element right here uh, shots like I said shots is static brought that in I, once again I just clicked on the ABC box Center it in the middle, up and down. Center it right and left. One thing I forgot to mention was I always use this right here. I click on this down arrow here. Uh, there's a little, looks like a little piece of paper and the arrows are pointing from the inside to the uh, edges of it. You click on that and I always click on shrink. And that way, if I have a situation where I have uh, a little bit longer name or whatever that I'm putting in that particular field, it'll keep it within that box that we've created. So this one here, I just double clicked on it. And I typed in shots and you can see how it got smaller. Let's go ahead and make it white. We're going to use the same font and extra bold on that. And then for the shot number, did the same thing again. Centered in the middle, up and down, left and right. Click on shrink, double click on it. We're going to type in the number zero just as a placeholder. We're going to make it white. We're going to use the same font and make it extra bold. And then the last thing we're going to do is the team score. Again, click on the ABC. We're going to make this a little bit bigger because we want this to be seen easily. Center it in the middle, up and down, left and right. Make the color white. Let's go back to the same font that we've been using. We're going to make it extra bold. We're going to put the number one in there.
and we're going to make the font size 96. I'm clicking on the title for this particular element and then I'm using my keys uh, to make fine adjustments. So that's how we made all these different elements within here. These are made the exact same way. For the sponsor images part of it, what I did, I don't want to have to go through and change the dimensions on each one of my sponsors. So what I do is, is I use the mask effect again. So I'm going to click on rectangle. I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to go to effects. I'm going to take the opacity down to one. We're going to name this sponsor mask example because I think I've already used this before. Sponsor mask example. Then we're going to bring in this right here. I really like this logo. I actually just had this made. Uh, had a three three dimensional representation uh, made. And I think it turned out really well. Okay, so we're going to put it over where we had that mask. So then I click on the image. I click on mask. I go down here to where it says sponsor mask example. I click on that. And you can see that my new 3D One Man Stream logo is only appearing in that area uh, that we made for the sponsor mask. So that's pretty much how we did all these different elements for um, this graphic. Now there's two things I want to show you. I mentioned that I have um, animations for PowerPlay set up on this as well. You can see over here on the right hand side all these little eyeballs. If you want the element to show up in your graphic, you want to make sure that you have these eyeballs showing. If you want it to not show up in your graphic, you click on it and you can see how that sponsor logo goes away as that eyeball goes away. So what we're able to do using vMix UTC is we can turn some of these uh, components off and on. So I'm going to go and bring in the PowerPlay information for the visiting team and it brings in this orange logo right here and then it brings in PP for PowerPlay and then it brings in a PowerPlay timer. I'm going to take that off. And then we have the exact same thing for home team. When we get to vMix UTC, I'll show you how we're able to turn these elements off and on. Okay, now let's go to the vMix UTC controller. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to overlay the graphic over top of this. And I'm going to reposition it because I don't want it to make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go over here and you can see where it says OMS right here. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to change this. So I'm going to go to right here where it says OMS and I'm just going to type in something different. I typed in DEN right here and you can see where this says home team and you can see where that changed to DEN. Uh, next to it is the home team shots. When I click on the home team shots, you can see where the shots change each time I click on the plus one. Next to that is the home is the home score. And you can see that each time I click on the home score, the score changes as well. Well, there's something I need to show you that I didn't show you just a moment ago. Okay, we'll use visitor score for example. Okay, on visiting score, let's go to animation. And what we're looking for is data change in and data change out. And you can see that all these elements here um, that the sponsor mask, the sponsor area, all of these have effects you can put on for data change in and data change out. So what we're looking for is visitors score. Data change in for visiting score. What we did is we used the zoom fade and we have it lasting a duration of one second. So on any time we do data change in, and I always use both. I do it on data on the data change in and the data change out. You can see we have zoom fade. We did the ex we did the exact same thing for home score. You can see we did zoom fade again a, dur a duration of one second. That was data change in and data change out. Same thing, zoom fade. 
So that's how when we add a shot or a score, we get that little zoom fade effect, which is kind of cool. The exact same thing uh, for the home, uh, I'm sorry, for the visiting team. Let's give them a couple shots. And let's give them another goal. We'll go ahead and start the clock and let's change the period from first to second. And you can see that it changed to second period. And then let's go ahead and change the sponsor logo. So let's go ahead and change it to something different. There's a previous tutorials. I'm just using that as an example, but that's how easy it is to change it. And then if we don't want to have it on all game long, if we only want to have it on at certain times, I have a button over here that allows me to just turn that whole section off. And then the last thing I'm going to show before we dive into the buttons is the power play. So I have the uh, home team power play set up for 10 seconds. You can see where the orange background comes in, the power play and the timer. And then when it gets to zero, you can see it automatically goes away. Well, now it's time to show you how we did some of these things. And we're gonna click on the settings button right there. And it brings the settings button in and you can see what we mapped it to. All I did was, um, uh, this is actually a text field widget. And that way, anything that we type into this little field right here, it's gonna be reflected in wherever we mapped it. So let's look at our title mapping. We use the hockey input and then we these are all the different components within that particular hockey um, graph uh, graphic that we made. And we have it set up for home team name. So we made sure we had it set up on home team name and we clicked OK. And as we demonstrated, anything that we type in here is going to be reflected automatically in our graphic. The next thing was home team shots. Let's click on the cog here. This is a score widget. We mapped it to the exact same uh, graphic, the hockey graphic, and we have this match to home shot number. So this is a match to the home team. So it's matched to home shot number. And again, you can see all the different elements uh, within this graphic. This one here, uh, as you would guess, this one is also a score widget. And we have this map to the title in this particular graphic, we have this map to home score. Let's go down to visiting team now. These are all going to be exact and map the exact same way, except this one's going to be visiting team name on, on obviously the visiting team. On visiting shots, we have this map to the hockey graphic and we have it mapped to visiting shot number. And these are just ways that I name it. You can use whatever convention you want, but I try to make it kind of self-explanatory uh, so that I'm not confusing myself. And the last one on visiting a score, I have this map to the ho hockey uh, graphic and it's matched to the visiting score text component of it. Okay, let's go look at the power plays uh, of the uh, power play clock now. This one right here, this is the home power play clock. I have this uh, map to the hockey graphic and it's set to the, the home team power play clock tech. So this is where the, uh, the digital readout is going gonna, is gonna to read. I have it set up under format just to be minutes and seconds, seconds. When this starts out, it starts out as hour, hour, colon, minute, minute, colon, second, seconds. And so I just have this set up for minutes and seconds. And you can see on completion, I wanted to run this piece of script right here, which is HPP off, which is home power play off. Well, where did we get that home power play off at? Well, that's right here. And when I set this up manually, there were th uh, several things that I had to do. And you can see where I have it, the execute button uh, checked right here. And here's the link to it. And in this particular, HPP off script, this is what happens. We set X visible off on image, which is source one. And we come down here to one and that's the home 
uh, power play background. That's the orange power play uh, element that pops up. And it's going to turn that off. And then it comes down to the second one. And this is text two. And here's all of our text ones. Text two is home power play clock. So it sets the visible off on that. And it also sets the visible off on text three. And that's going to be here, which is the home power play text. So this is going to turn it on. You can see it on right here. And then this will manually turn it off. And that's why I have the script set up in here. Where is it? For home power play off. And I have that on the clock on completion. It automatically runs that script so I don't have to go in there and manually take those three elements out. Have the exact same thing on the visiting power play. You can see where it pops up. You can see the orange background, the PP, and the number. And then it automatically goes away once it's completed. And we did the exact same thing for this one. Uh, the last thing is game clock. And I have this set for minutes, minutes, uh, back, or front slash, colon, second, seconds. And then we have it set to the hockey graphic, and then we have it set to, set to the time. And then on period, period is a list widget. And I have first, second, third, and overtime set up on this list widget. And under the mapping, I have it set up to the hockey graphic, and then the period part of the hockey graphic. So you can see where it changes to third, and then I'll come back to it again, and you can see where it changes to overtime. And then we'll go ahead and change the sponsor again to this, and then we'll take that element out altogether. So let's just bring that graphic in one more time. That will conclude our tutorial today. I hope you found it interesting. And like I said, even if you have no interest in hockey, the elements that we covered today in this tutorial are things you can use for any graphic that you create uh, for any sport. Uh, if you do me a favor, stop by our website. I almost have it up to date. Uh, OneManStream.com. I have all the tutorials up there except the last one. Our last tutorial was on NDI Monitor. And then um, this tutorial, I'll have this one up as well. Uh, there is a shop there. I keep getting requests on uh, my graphics. If you're interested in any of the graphics that I have and you'd like to download those, um, you can download those from the uh, store that I have there. They're very reasonable. Uh, most of them are just a couple dollars and it kind of helps me out and allows me to keep doing this. So if you like what we're doing here, please give us a thumbs up and a like. Make sure that you do subscribe so that you'll be alerted as soon as new videos are posted. And as always, thank you so much.